All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you all for uh, having me here. So uh, th I think this is one of the uh, uh, one one of the uh, how should I say mm, one one of the aspects of a community that we try to collaborate with other communities and you know uh, create a network and also learn from each other. So uh, I have been practicing open science principles for more than a decade now. And luckily, I got the opportunity to become a coordinator of a community. Uh, that is the Open Science Community Twente. Uh, of course, the community doesn't just start by itself. There are some founding members. And these are the three uh, who actually made some effort to start it in Twente. Uh, so Raul, uh, Marga, and Thomas uh, all, are all professors at the University of Twente. And they also, just like me, believed a lot in the open science-ness uh, of the work that they were doing, and hence they decided to start it. And the professors don't have time, so they need coordinators. <laughs> and uh, we uh, have four coordinators. Luckily, one professor still said, I have time, so I will uh, continue being the coordinator as well as the founder. Uh, so. The people from UT, they were lucky enough to get some funding so they could uh, register some hours uh, for this uh, open science uh, activities. Uh, and the people from Saxion, so that's uh, Ruth Steltenpol and me, we uh, don't have any hours to do this. We do it purely out of the love for uh, open science. So I'm sure most of you are still uh, very passionate open science believers and hence also doing it purely out of love. But that's great. Keep up the spirit and continue uh, all the hard work that you're all putting in. So, uh, but what is really uh, the idea behind open science? It's to actually make your work fair. And what does fair stands for? Uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So the idea here is to make your work findable, to make your work accessible, to make sure if somebody is using it, uh, to at least uh, he's, uh, he or she or they are able to reproduce it. And also, if they want to integrate it with their own solutions, is there some interoperability? And this is all what the open science community is actually trying to achieve. Because there are so many researchers out there, so many uh, not research. I mean, I think we are all researchers because we are all learning new things. So I think we are always researching. You don't need to have a PhD to be a researcher, but I think yeah, as long as you have the knowledge, you are a researcher. You are a born researcher. And all we want to do here is to make our work fair. And this is what the open science community is trying to achieve here. How can we help all born researchers to make their work fair? And fair can be open, fair can be closed, fair can be premium. It all again burns down to the IP and licenses issue, but that's something we don't need to worry about if you want to make your work fair. Go open first, and then if people complain, then think about the licenses and IP and stuff. But that's something you don't really have to worry about when you start, start being fair. So uh, how do we do it? We organize a variety of open science events. Uh, for example, uh, I don't know how it works in the hardware community, but uh, when you're dealing with uh, uh, data sets, uh, code, open source code, or any other uh, uh, output that you have generated in your work, you would like to know if, uh, if you have a, if you for, for example have some code, you would like to know how should I uh, be managing it. So you, there is an event where we organize something like software management plan, you know, when, uh, where we will help you to sort of uh, arrange your code in a nice systematic manner so that people who are using it further down the lane are able to understand what you did. And it's also interoperable or reusable. Another event that is called Code Check NL to make sure that your work is reproducible. So what this, uh, uh, I think there are a group of volunteers who, what they do is sort of check your code, give you a certificate. Oh, the code that you provided to me is actually working. Because I, I'm pretty sure most of us have come across some repositories or some code where you download it and it doesn't work. And then this is some sort of a check, you know, to just to make sure that your code is actually reusable. Another event is like where we very much focus on is the open science guide for early career researchers. I mean, you can 
uh, strip out the early career researchers, I would just say born researchers. And this is basically the guide to you know, practice some open science principles. So how can you make your work fair? And this is also what is the core focus of our open science community in general. And I'm pretty sure you might have also come across a scenario where you end up with a lot of data sets. And one of the aspects that we also see in universities with researchers is they generate a lot of data sets, but however, those data sets are never exposed uh, because they don't know how to do it. And this is where, again, the valorization team or the digital competence center team comes into play like data stewards, you might have heard of them uh, within your organizations, where they come and help us uh, to uh, share their knowledge on how can we do it? How can we make our work fair? In this case, fair data sets. And how can, how can you also publish your articles in open access journals? Uh, I think that is one of the biggest uh, uh, hurdle at the moment in the country where uh, we are trying to make sure all the researchers are publishing in open access journals instead of closed journals because they always charge a lot of money and most of, that, uh, most of the research is done with tax money. So we want to make sure that uh, the taxpayer's money is uh, actually spent on useful thing and the taxpayer can access those journals without having to go through the paywalls. And this is also what we are trying to fight for with open access uh, principles. And uh, I also heard uh, today uh, there were some issues with licensing and IP. Those topics are also discussed in these open science events, uh, uh, the community events. And I mean, there are many activities that we uh, uh, coordinate within the community and organize these events uh, 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 throughout the year. So uh, every community is striving for this and they all try to present as much information as possible to verify your work. Uh, and yeah, verify. Yeah. Uh, that's the beauty of English. Uh, but uh, least but not, last but not the least, in September, we have the Open Science National Week that is from 23rd uh, to 27th September. And during that week, uh, every local chapter uh, of the Open Science Community in Netherlands is organizing something. So uh, with that uh, note, we are not the only one community in the Netherlands. The first Open Science Community in the Netherlands was started in Utrecht in 2018, and we started in 2021. But you can see uh, that uh, the idea of to make your work fair is just spreading. They're, we are not the only one. I think in total there are now 11 communities in the Netherlands uh, trying to promote the open science principles uh, in every possible way. So I, I heard you're from Leiden, you're from uh, Nijmegen, you're from, uh, well, you're Twente, you, uh, you should join us. Uh, and, uh, and one from Rotterdam. I think all the universities in Netherlands have an open science community now. So if there is any chapter that you feel more attached to, please reach out to them. Uh, I mean, you don't have to reach out. It's pretty uh, easy to become a member. You just have to fill in a form and then it's, uh, it's, it's free. And wh what do you get out of it? You get a lot of uh, information in form of newsletters. You get invitations to events. Uh, where, you know, it's just like this, uh, where you meet uh, fellow open science believers and you learn from each other uh, problems, solutions, which is more or less what we're also trying to do here, right? In Netherlands, it's not, is not the only uh, uh, country that is uh, doing open science community-related uh, activities. It's also spreading throughout the world. Uh, so uh, it just shows that there are more believers who would actually want to practice these principles that we are trying to uh, preach and practice. Yeah. So uh, these slides will be shared across. So uh, whenever you have time, feel free to. Th this is for the uh, Twente QR code. But if there is some chapter that you actually belong, uh, you, you think you should be part of, please uh, check them out. And it's, it, it's very easy to join the event. And uh, also, uh, I think uh, we, we do uh, strive to communicate between other uh, communities. Uh, by, uh, there, there are events, uh, national events, uh, like uh, there's one going to happen in Maastricht uh, this year, uh, which is the Open Science National Event. And there's also an Open Science Retreat where the coordinators meet other coordinators. Uh, so that way, you also get to know what's happening with, uh, within other communities. And 
some useful links, but I think uh, the first one is uh, quite relevant for uh, GOSH, where it's like a starter kit to start your own start your own open science community. I don't think there is one in Netherlands which is open science hardware community. And I think this could be something uh, that you could, because I see there are a lot of fab labs, a lot of uh, different uh, uh, hack hacking spaces. Uh, and I think this could be a really nice uh, possibility where you can start your own open science hardware community and also see how it relates to with GOSH and uh, uh, well, gathering and global and uh, all different uh, of uh, communities out there. And uh, also, uh, based on your talk the, about the infrastructure and uh, uh, reproductiveness and, uh, sorry, I forgot the two other accesses. Uh, uh, yeah. So there is, uh, so recently the Dutch government uh, released around 12.5 million uh, euros for uh, funding, for funding open science activities. And there is, it, there is a call called the Open Science Infrastructure Call. Uh, maybe that is something uh, uh, useful for the hardware people. And the good thing is uh, University of Applied Sciences can also be main applicants. And there are other Dutch institutions who could also be uh, applicants. So it's not just, open science is not just restricted to universities, but it's also now moving to applied sciences universities and other institutions. So this call could be something uh, for the open science hardware community to set up some infrastructure so that you can make your work more open and uh, verify it. So yeah, uh, these are some uh, uh, useful links I think could be uh, relevant uh, for uh, most of you here. Uh, the slides will be shared. And this is all what I wanted to talk about, about the uh, community in Twente. For the, for the Tukers, uh, feel free to uh, join us for, I don't know what are the other names, what, what, what are the people from Leiden, uh, Leidenars? Leiden. Yeah, for the Leidenars, join Leiden, uh, Nijmegen. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Hagenese, yeah. And uh, I, uh, do you consider it to be uh, a Rotterdammer? Or? Yeah, okay, so there is also Erasmus uh, Open Science Community. Please feel free to reach out to them. And for the rest, uh, there is one in Berlin as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, Buenos Aires, I think it's a great opportunity for you to start one there. Yeah. Well, uh, and for the student uh, associations, uh, I think uh, you please uh, promote this within your uh, 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 student association where students, students are also welcome to join the community. And of course, there's always free coffee. So, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Instead of publishing everything public, isn't it possible that institutions give out email addresses to people that are not uh, official students or workers? Because very often you cannot go behind the paywall or whatever because you don't have an institution True. email uh, address. Mm -hmm. uh, as a, I think. Uh, you probably need the institutional email address if you are using these uh, uh, of official journals. But if you are on archive or other uh, uh, publishing platforms where you don't really need to have an institutional address. So you could have, you, maybe you just need an ORCID account or some other accounts where you don't really need to be part of an institution. You can still publish your work on yes, these publish, platforms. But I don't want to publish, I want yeah? to. Ah, because it's behind the paywall. But, th but that is something we are fighting for now. Where, you know, uh, once you have open access articles, you don't need a, a, a paywall. Uh, you don't need an institution account because anybody can read it. And that's the push that we are trying to make now. So that researchers or any person publishing is publishing in open access uh, journals. But the solution, uh, the current, uh, if you're looking for a solution now, uh, unfortunately, institutes don't provide uh, institutional accounts so that anybody can uh, access the I article. I, I, I am not a policy maker, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe you know. Uh, I find a lot of biology papers on archive uh, websites, like uh, pre, pre preprints. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing, uh, um, many 
most journals have like an open access options these days yes. for publishers. Yeah. It's policy in my department to always go with the open access. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's also uh, within the department's uh, open access, you have to pay, for, pay more. Uh, but that money is taken care of by the departmental financial uh, uh, people. But, uh, and that's why uh, the D Dutch government is not trying to, uh, you know, uh, buy the rights from the publishers so that you don't have to pay uh, these additional costs uh, that you have to pay to make it open access. And there, there's a lot of bureaucracy happening behind the scenes. And, uh, uh, and unfortunately, people who are really interested to know what's happening uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the article, you have to wait. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I think that, that, yeah, that's a good point because you, uh, if you find something that is interesting, uh, reach out to the authors. Yeah, they, they yeah. never get uh, Yeah. Yeah. No. I know it's, you know, as a publishing scientist, I know it's very special when somebody actually reads it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But uh, thanks a lot for uh, li uh, so, like listening to me. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.